Hello, everyone, and welcome to the week ahead. We are beginning this week with a new moon in Sagittarius. So I hope you're ready for the new journey that you're about to begin. It's not just a new journey to an unknown or a foreign place as much as it is a new way of thinking about the past, a new set of beliefs, maybe even a new vision for the future. Because what's happening right now, you know, is we're starting this new moon, even in the hours, the new moon perfects later this afternoon. And then you know, by this time tomorrow, um, Mercury will be retrograde and we'll have the first light of the moon with this moon and Capricorn applying to Mercury. So a lot of what happens during Mercury retrograde periods, you know, Mercury retrograde is often blamed for um, breakdowns and communication and things that are um, you know, things that stop working, basically. And I have already experienced that in the Mercury pre-shadow phase. So the degrees of this Mercury retrograde are eight degrees Capricorn all the way back to 22 degrees Sag. You'll see the sun is just about to be actually within the shadow degrees of, of Mercury. And the midpoint of the retrograde journey will be when Mercury is conjunct the sun, which happens actually on the solstice when the sun moves into Capricorn. So it's a pretty powerful and very strong and significant Mercury retrograde in that we're finishing the last cycles of Mercury's retrograde cycles being in earth signs. All year they've been in earth signs. We had the Taurus retrograde, which was five to 15 degrees Taurus. Those are the same degrees that Jupiter is still going retrograde over. We had the um, Virgo retrograde, which was, you know, through the sign of Virgo it, about three months ago. And then now we're completing the year. We're going to end 2023 with a Mercury retrograde. That goes back between Earth and fire signs, right? Sagittarius is a fire sign. We've got Mars and Ceres and the sun in Sagittarius right now. And so a lot of the, you know, conflict <clears throat> in this particular season can really be the, con the, the conflict that we feel relative to our will, our desires, our journey, and, and how much we want to be pointed you know, Sagittarius being the arrow in the direction of the future. And yet it feels like things are dragging us back. You know, it's like when that, when you got your mojo going and you're like, oh yeah, I'm feeling good. And then all of a sudden you stub your toe. Oh, and then somebody, you know, you go into the store and somebody spills coffee on your, your cute little outfit. And you're like, oh, <laughs> you know. And it's like, ah, uh, now I got to go change my clothes. And now, you know, and now my, if my foot hurts and, and then, you know, you go on and get home and you check the mail and there's like a bill from the past from years ago, you know, that it was never paid. Oh, now that money that I just got the bonus in my paycheck is gone. You know, it's like, and, and that feeling could happen with Mercury retrograde. Mercury retrograde can bring back old people from the past, old situations from the past, things that are unresolved. And these are all Capricorn, Saturn, structural, conditional things in our life that need to be resolved. Why do they need to be resolved? Because in order for us to move forward into that new journey, into that new beginning, into that new vision in our life, some part of the past has to get out of the way. It's imagine you get this fresh wind in your sails and you feel so excited and it blows you right into a boulder of stuff that 
you you got to move out of the way in order for something new to come into your life. Now, this can happen in all the different areas of our life, wherever Sagittarius is in your chart, wherever Capricorn is in your chart. Jupiter's been retrograde in Taurus for some time now and will continue through the next month. We're getting to the end of that retrograde cycle. And really, these these two, Jupiter and Mercury, are the last you know, the last ones to make this journey this year. Um, Uranus will station also station direct soon. And then we're going to be in really a, a, a completely new year and then a powerful place of forward motion, right? So we want to, when we get to that place of forward motion, have resolved and cleared up the things from the past that would be holding us back. Now, Capricorn can have to do with all also conditioning, like our conditioning around authority, our conditioning around government and um, Saturn things of responsibility. And part of what happens within you know, Sagittarius, there's this optimism and this, you know, freedom and hopefulness, this blessed nature of Jupiter. And if we don't know how to harness that energy gone unchecked, it can become endless seeking, endless seeking, endless seeking, and never finding. It can become dogmas and beliefs and ideas that then actually limit us in ways that should have created freedom. It can become um, excessiveness, too much, right? Too much spending, too much, you know, isolation, too much stuff, too much, you know, eating, too much responsibility, maybe even, right? Because we're going to have in the next couple of days, Mercury, as it retrogrades back, make its trine to Jupiter as Jupiter is getting back into, you know, its final degrees of this retrograde. So part of what we're resolving as we set out on this new journey, as we start to point ourselves in a different direction is like, what do I need to actually let go of that has been getting in the way, getting in the way of forgiveness, getting in the way of my healing, getting in the way, you know, I was in this class the other day and um, the facilitator suggested that everyone who's participating in this class, um, you know, abstain from substances 24 hours prior to the class and 24 hours after, because the work that we're doing, the deeper emotional work that we're doing in this class um, and learning how to hold space and learning how to show up for our feelings, our emotions and process and is really deep work. And there can be a natural avoidance of our strong emotions or feelings and numbing out with substances. Now that can be anything, right? We you can numb out with any you with Netflix, with shopping, with you know any form of social media distraction, um, with tobacco, alcohol, you know, any substance can be abused. But when she suggested that we abstain from all substances, she included coffee, and all of a sudden I felt all my resistance, but this is a part of my morning ritual. Well, I need coffee. Like I have to have it. I have to have it when I wake up first thing in the morning. And it was really interesting to go into feeling all the resistance that I had to letting go of this substance, which I have predominantly depended on so much so that I could say definitely coffee is a dependency. Like I've been sick. I've been under the weather the last couple of days and I have not wanted to let go of coffee. And when she suggested that we might 
have a 24 hour to 48 hour reprieve from what any substance and I don't use very you know like I've pretty much um clean cleaned and sobered my life you know but even so it brought up all the places where I'm still addicted to something right addicted to caffeine um I can say that there's there's I can I face like the resistance of like addicted to stuff right we can have addictions I face the resistance of um you know sugar is another one of those ones where it's like oh it's very hard to let go of these are chemical dependencies and our brain can become chemically dependent on anything even even another you know we can become um attached to others in a way where we can become like with especially with this venus and scorpio you know that uh emotional attachment <clears throat> the attachment to intimacy there is there are so many different facets and forms of addictions right and especially this time of year you can call it being in the holiday spirit you know whatever it is the propensity towards excess right jupiter is excess spending too much money on gifts eating too much stuff you know and a part of what this calls us towards is the square the natural square between sagittarius and virgo pisces right the numbing out and the disassociating and all those right are all of our different coping mechanisms so i you know i did a whole process around letting go of caffeine and and i went to the grocery store today i i bought some decaf coffee i'm like i don't know if that's the answer necessarily but i'm open minded enough in facing the addiction that i have to caffeine that it I'm willing enough that it might help me to change because what that addiction is hiding from me is my need for rest, is my need for replenishment, is my need for connection, right? And I can compensate with the addiction, right? It, wherever we have this, I our, the excess in our life the beliefs that we have about ourselves, the belief that I'm unworthy, that I'm unlovable, that I will be hurt or betrayed, the belief, you know, whatever it is where the core attachment wounding, right? We've got Venus and Scorpio. So we're going to be facing those things where the roots of I'm bad, I will be abandoned, I'm helpless, I'm not good enough, I will be disrespected, I'm unloved, I am weak, you know, I'm not safe. I'm not worthy. Those things are going to come up to the surface. Those addictions will disguise or mask the, the real needs that we have. South node in Libra, ru that Venus ruling that South node, she will, you know, and Mercury's retrograde might bring up past conditioning, past patterns, very structural things that are sort of like, Oh man, this is breaking down again. Can't seem to hold it together. Oh man, this family dynamic is present again. Oh man, you know, like Capricorn having to do with the father, also Saturn having to do with the father. And Pluto, I also think of as really pertaining to those deeper ancestral karmas. The generation, 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 right? If we have a generational pattern of trauma, if we have a generational pattern of alcoholism, if we have a generational pattern, whatever the pa family pattern is, suppression, depression, you know, right? It's all got to be schluffed up to the top, to the surface, to brought, brought up. And the calling right now, of course, in order for us to point ourselves in the direction of the new vision is that we have to be willing to go into the unknown. We have to be willing to not know what the answer is. We have to be willing to um, release the excess and the energy of seeking in order to open the 
the ideas that that thing over there that I'm seeking is going to give me this thing in here that I'm wanting to feel, right? And one of the messages that I received in ceremony recently was like, you, you have to stop seeking things outside of you to feel a way inside of you, to feel something inside of you. And all of the truth within us, the truth of who we are, our lovability, our beauty as a our brilliance as a spirit as a soul right the the guidance inside that we can access it's all in the inside but it's under the surface of those distractions or access or you know that you know and it's not something that we have to go somewhere to find or that we you know which is why when the past comes back when the family you're with the family members and they're and you're triggered which is why when you're in the friend situation and all of a sudden you feel that sense of alienation and not belonging and those like young parts of you come up which is why when you're trying to buy the perfect gift, but you feel the sense of financial insecurity that like there's not enough money, there's not enough resources. If you take the time to actually feel what's there in this time, especially, if we take the time to emote, to actually move through the difficult emotions, the the truth can actually reveal itself to us there's there can be an opening towards forgiveness this especially around this christmas time we have a really the the holiday week this week is a really interesting one because we get this sun in sagittarius mars in sagittarius square to this neptune you know pisces moon um, headed into the week of Christmas. And then, you know, then, and, and of course the moon will try and Venus in Scorpio before, and Venus and Mars are traveling, you know, Venus is behind Mars right now. She's going to catch up, but not until February when they're in Aquarius. So there's, there's quite a lot of ground that they're both going to cover before we actually get to um, a common ground. And that common ground comes on the other side of Pluto entering the sign of Aquarius. I did recently an EA Zoom panel with Kristen Fontana and Bradley Narragon, um, which I can link in the description of this video. And we talked about the first six months of the year. That's as far as we got. It was a really beautiful discussion. But if you're interested in that, it's totally free. You can watch that um, on the EA Zoom channel. Um, and, you know, we looked into the, especially the Venus Mars conjunction that's in February. Um, but we get through this week and then we've got this Aries moon, right? Trying Mars <clears throat> with the moon conjunct Chiron. And I've been thinking a lot about the symbol for Sagittarius because it's a, it's a centaur you know, with the arrow pointing and the centaur is this, you know, Chiron was a centaur, half horse, half man, right? So there's this, this limitation uh, in being a creature that is wounded, but that develops himself as a gifted healer teacher, which is very much the archetype of Sagittarius, healer, teacher, guru, sage, saint, you know, but also sinner, like, Chiron was wounded originally by his mother's rejection and then that birth wound and then physically he was wounded by a, an arrow stuck in his leg right so there's these two wounds that we can be walking around with in our life experience one being the birth imprinting and that those are generally the the roots of the core attachment wounding um, I'm not lovable. I'm not worthy. And then there's the wounding that we can get from life itself. I will be betrayed, right? I will be hurt. I, I, I don't get what I want, you know, whatever it is, wherever that comes from, there's an opportunity for us in this time to be accessing and healing the deeper wounds from the past. 
And as we do that, then we get to reshape the beliefs that we have around ourselves. We get to reframe and reinterpret what is happening in our lives now so that it's no longer a repetition of these past patterns. We get to finally break some of that conditioning down so that there is a sense of courage and optimism and a new idea about what home, what life, what love, what relationship, what, you know, family looks like, what commitment looks like, right? So many people are wounded around marriage. And I know that after I got divorced, it was really challenging for me to have a healthy perspective around marriage because, well, I had that early childhood wounding around marriage. My parents divorced very when I was very young. That was deeply painful. And then I had a deeply painful, right? I got that wounding around marriage uh, later on in my life when the perfect marriage with the perfect relationship with the perfect person turned out into a situation with a lot of betrayal and hurt. And, and so much has happened in this year, especially where deep forgiveness around that has come up for me, deep healing and a new sense of what might be possible in marriage, a new sense of what commitment and union might look like. But there's still like this ongoing purification process that continues to happen for me to get to a place where I'm actually ready for that, right? And that's part of the journey in our lives right now is that from an evolutionary perspective, we are uh, we're in that process, deconditioning and taking apart the past and the places so that the seed of a new thing can actually be planted where less of the old is dictating the truth about what we are deserving for, about what we can have, about what is. And a lot of the times our beliefs are not based on what is, they are based on what was. And that's a part of what I can see this Mercury retrograde is really going to help us. Like the intervention, when old things break down, what's the intervention? The intervention is that we get the new thing, right? So a car breaks down. Do we respond to that with a lot of fear of how am I going to get a new car and I'm not going to have what I need and, oh, look at this, you know, the terrible situation. Or do we look at this as like, wow, this is a great opportunity. I might actually get something that I wanted even more. How can this best possibly work out for me? Either one of those are perspectives and there's optimism in Sagittarius. Of course, in the Taurus, uh, you know, Capricorn axis, we're working with the practical limitations of resources and financial needs, which might mean that like, hey, it might be hard to get a loan or hey, it might, might need to wait t- some time for insurance matters to work out in order, you know, but what I've always noticed with Mercury retrogrades, they're you know, three weeks long. There's the breakdown, the information that comes in through the shadow period, which is the time before Mercury stations retrograde is very important. It pertains to the retrograde itself and to the resolution. Trust what's coming in. The breakdown itself is also very important. It's pointing to something underlying in our framework, our structure, our reality that has to change. And we want it to change because it's a necessary part of healing the past in order for us to move forward. And then trust the process of resolution because even if it takes time, one of my teachers used to call it mercury retrograde interventions, you know, even if it takes additional time in our patience for things to work out, we find that we get something better, things, something better. If you, we slow down, if you don't rush to sign that contract, don't rush to send that email, but take the extra time to look things over, take the extra time to feel into what is most important for the structure of your reality and to feel into the beliefs 
that have to change the ideas about reality that have to change in order for something new to be possible for you. And then as we do that, like a miracle can happen, a, a resolution that was beyond what you imagined, a forgiveness that was beyond what you could possibly have thought, a healing that was beyond what, and it's always the what's beyond our ideas and our knowing that actually brings us to a place of possibility for something new. And so that's, I think, one of the beautiful things as we head into this Christmas holiday, you know, Christmas and Hanukkah both relate to um, miracles happening, things that were beyond what people, and there was all these messages that came through in those times, all these lessons and these teachings about trusting the miracle, about having faith in the process about, you know, something bigger and better and, you know, from the great beyond coming to bring us forward into something new. And as we enter this season, we have to be mindful of those parts of us that are afraid because what they're, they're really afraid of love. They're really afraid of what it's like for our, our lives to change. They're really afraid of what peace would be like. We think that we're afraid of, of war. We think we're afraid of being hurt. But I think that we fear more receiving what we actually desire because it would annihilate the presence of fear and that presence of fear is so deeply conditioned. You know, it's so much a part of what we're taught and what we're told and what so many people believe about the world. And so that shows up in the world because we believe it so strongly. And if we want to release that fear and be a presence of peace and love, we have to face that inside of ourselves. We have to face that what, that which is inside of us, which says, I have to have something outside of me. In, in order to feel joy, in order to feel better, and it, in order to feel like I'm enough. And that's a really deep and <clears throat> kind of an icky, sticky place, you know, and I've been facing it in this past week. And it's, it's one of those things. It's like, oh, man, that empties one out really quickly. And, you know, it's not to do that, to, to remain in a place of being deflated or but really to, to stay anchored in a place of not knowing, in a, in a place of humility, in a place of patience. That's what I keep trying to tell myself. Most of the time I'm telling you guys things that I'm trying to tell myself all the time and then just doing my best to live into the answer, to have the questions and to live into the answer of what it, what it would be like, you know, to experience love what it would be like to have a marriage rooted in trust and belonging and to have intimacy and connection, what it would be like to give birth to a child who is so loved and wanted in the world and what it would be like to feel safe in our lives, what it would be like to feel joy and optimism and aliveness without needing a substance or anything to give that to us. What it would be like to feel free from the past and so at home in ourselves, right? Whatever it is that you're wishing for, dreaming for, praying for, hoping for, we wouldn't have these longings inside of us if the possibility of them weren't true. If the truth of their presence in the world weren't real. And so it's a matter of the moment of our lives matching what's inside us already with such a deep desire in the world for peace, then only peace would prevail, right? With a, such a deep desire for only love. But a part of what our challenge is, is we don't often just hold a singular desire. I know for me, it's like that split desire in, in 
in the Pluto work that talk about the separating desires, the desire to separate from source and the sep and the desire to be united with source, right? And the soul comes in with both desires and we're, we're really doing the work of filtering out and discerning, is this desire separating me from source or is it connecting me to source? Do I feel more connected and loved and whole and holy, or do I feel anger, fear, disappointment, disillusionment, resistance, control, domination, any of the, you know, like whatever it is. And if we can feel it and face it, then we can really, we can find freedom from it. And that freedom, I think, is often found through grace, through the journey, through our path, through what is unknowable to us, but is as known to us as our breath. So my friends, wishing you a blessed uh, week. I will be doing a free solstice transmission for those of you who are on my email list. You already received an invite. If you want to go to my website, sign up. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And I would love to hear your heart, your wishes, your prayers, anything that landed in you that it just feels so good um, to know that this is that this matters and that um, my my truest joy is to be of service to to you and to share this. And I'm so grateful for your presence in my life. Thank you so much for listening and bye for now, my friends. Hope to see you again soon.